Welcome back. So in this video, we're talking about um, a quick review of our uh, dot product um, as it pertains to work and what the implications of using a dot product actually means. We're going to revisit that thought experiment that we had before of me pushing on a block that's already moving down a frictionless um, um, a path, track, if you will. Um, so, so before I get ahead of myself, let's revisit where we were. We said that um, f dot delta x uh, is is going to be our work, right? That is our best way of talking about work. In most cases for this class, there are a few exceptions. Um, in which case, we'll actually need to kind of think about it as a path integral. Um, but again, I'm not leaning on that heavily, mainly because. Um, I don't want to freak people out, essentially, um, by having to use a path integral. No, 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 no. Um, we're simply saying that at every point along this path, we need to evaluate the dot product. Now, that's really kind of complicated. So in a lot of situations, we can devise um, uh, a system of looking at things a certain way, such that we get f dot delta x, and we don't have to do an integral. Um, now, recall back from chapter 3, we did talk about um, two different ways to multiply vectors together. Both f and delta x are vectors. Um, so this is our scalar product, right? This is our dot product. And we said back in chapter 3 that the dot product, c, is equal to a dotted with b. Now these aren't actual vectors, I'm just drawing ABC. Right? I'm just saying ABC right now. Um, but it illustrates the point that C is going to be a scalar because I'm going to say AX, the X component of A, uh, times BX plus AY times BY. And then if there were z components, we would continue this. Um, but this equals our dot product c. Notice that there are no vectors. There's no vector components when we come out of this. There's no i hat, j hat, k hat. There's no x, y, z. It's just a number. And that makes sense because work, energy, just numbers. They're scalars. So uh, we said in the last video that we can also um, simplify this, right? If we know some geometric information about this as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine of the angle between A and B. So I'm going to draw, so we could draw that right now. Excuse me. Something like that. And let's say I have A here and B here, All right? This is my angle between A and B. And really what I'm doing is I'm finding the, uh, the parallel part of A onto B, or B onto A, it's actually equivalent. And what I'm saying here is that um, I'm taking this projection, I'm projecting one of the vectors onto the other and looking at that product. In terms of our work, right, I have, let's say, a force in a certain direction and a dis displacement in another direction. I'm saying how much of that force is in the direction of my displacement. So a quick reminder um, about uh, unit circles. <laughs> only because I find them to be super useful um, for quick remembrances of, of trig functions. I say all students take calc. It's not always true. So maybe a smart trig class is a little bit better. But what we're saying is that all the trig functions are, um, are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. Um, in the third quadrant, tangent is positive, and in the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So, 
at zero degrees, right, cosine is equal to one. Sine of zero equals one. If I think about cosine of 90 degrees, right, well, I'm one here. Symmetry rules. I should be negative one here. Maybe that's a better way of doing it. Cosine of 180 is going to be negative one. So then cosine of 90 is zero, and cosine of 270 is also zero. Now, I want to go back to our imaginary scenario, right? If, if I have a force that is in the direction of my displacement, I am going to do positive work on this object, right? Imagine, so let's, let's actually redraw our scenario. I'll give it a track. I have a block. Let's draw that block a little bit better. I have a block that's, let's say, moving to the right. If I apply a force to the right on this block, I will increase its kinetic energy. I will make it go faster. And you're probably saying, well, yeah, you're applying an acceleration. Right? A force, applying a force creates an acceleration, I'm moving faster, of course, yeah. Exactly, these two ways of thinking are, are um, equivalent. That is the scenario of cosine of zero. If I think about a different scenario, let's say uh, cosine of 180, what if I apply a force opposite to the way it's already moving? Well, I'm going to slow it down, right? I'm applying a force that gives it a negative acceleration compared to the positive velocity, and I slow it down. But if I'm thinking about it in terms of energy and work, what I'm actually saying here is that I'm doing negative work on our system. The environment does negative work. Um, and so I'm actually slowing the system down. I'm taking energy out of my system and into the environment. Now comes the odd, uh, the odd um, um, kind of scenario of what if I apply a force, right? What if I apply a force perpendicular to the motion that it's already going in? In that case, I do no work. Cosine of 90 and cosine of 270 is zero. So I don't change the speed of this thing. That makes sense. If I have a velocity in the x direction and I apply a force that gives it a y acceleration, the y acceleration is not going to change the x velocity. They're independent of so now I'm not changing that kinetic energy as we've defined it. Um, no work has been done. So that kind of concludes our imaginary scenario here of moving this block um, or pushing on this block down and moving uh, one more try. Pushing this block as it moves along a frictionless track. Uh, the next video, I want to actually explore a little bit more about these no-work scenarios and how many and what type of situations we're actually talking about here. No-work scenarios are a little odd. Uh, they feel a little unintuitive. But again, think about, um, uh, keep, I, not think about, keep in mind, this is a scalar system. We're not talking about vectors anymore, um, at least not as much. So that's it for this video. Um, if it was a little confusing, um, feel free to you know, come into an office hour um, or email me um, or watch the video again and see if you, it makes a little bit more sense the second time around. Um, the book is also a really good resource, but again, I know there's an aversion to reading the book. So um, I'll pick
pick it up next time. See you later.